All right, power. You may not think the diploma is power. Uh, the diploma does not grant you political power or the ability to beat up criminals, and it may not even guarantee you a job, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> uh, but it does represent something significant. It's intellectual capital. You will have acquired some small measure of authority and credibility with that acknowledgement of your accomplishments. And I'm here, here to tell you to spend it. I'm not going to tell you specifically how to spend it. Many of you may disagree with how I personally use my academic freedom, and that's fine. I'm a strong believer in stochastic processes. And while individuals may go off in directions we don't like, I'm confident that the aggregate activity of large numbers of very smart people expressing themselves in public will end up in making the world a better place. So let me just give you a few very general guidelines. So here's things I want you to do in the future. Uh, first and foremost, I want you to create more smart people. You know, the best thing you can do for the future is to encourage and enable more people to follow you by teaching, by mentorship, by example, or by support. This is basic. You all know that science is a collaborative enterprise. So you should have had this done into your head by now. I should also warn you that, of course, your alumni association will be contacting, contacting you regularly from now on to remind you of this duty. Here's another one you may take for granted, but I assure you, much of the world outside this little circle of nerds does not. And that's criticize. It's one of the most powerful tools in the scientific toolbox. And self-criticism in constant testing and evaluation of our ideas is how we make our understanding greater. If you haven't gotten out of the lab much in the last few years, that, that may have been a problem, uh, you may be surprised at how much shock and dismay you can generate with the simple words, I think you're wrong, and here's why. Don't be shy about using those words. In a related piece, I want you to go ahead and be offensive. I'm afraid I'm offensive all the time, and I've got reams of hate mail to prove it. For example, there's, there's lots of things I say that you do not have to agree with. And I'm sure there are things you would say that I do not agree with, but we have the responsibility to say them. I say, for instance, that women should have the right to decide what to do with their own bodies. They are just as good at science as men. And when I say that, the angry male streams in. I say that gay people should have the same rights as straight people. And I've offended a vocal cord right there. Personally, I think that all religion is foolish tosh and an affront to reason and the dignity of humankind. And boy, I get outraged mail when I say that sort of thing. And that's all good. Uh, you don't have to agree with everything I say because the role of the public intellectual is to spark the argument and provoke change, not to dictate it. Raise your voices and make your opinions heard. More generally, what that means is that you have to communicate. All these years of training have stuffed your brains with arcane knowledge. You know amazing things that very few other people understand. You already know about the expectation that you will write about your knowledge in the form of arcane articles and even more arcane journals. But you should also feel a moral obligation to explain it to everyone else. I don't mean this as an excuse to be a deadly bore at parties, that's a danger. Uh, but that you should put serious effort into explaining the significance of what you do to people like your grandmother, or the readers of your local newspaper, or the President of the United States. They don't understand what you do. Tell them. One final admonition. Uh, what's going on right here is a small miracle. You're all going to be receiving a nearly identical piece of parchment that says you're all graduates of the Keck School of Medicine. Uh, yet did you notice that you did not have to sign a loyalty oath to enroll here? There's no USC dogma that you're expected to adhere to. Some of you have, may have immersed yourself in such different specialties that you scarcely understand what your equally specialized peers say about their work. Or you may even disagree strongly with them. 
You have different politics, different religious beliefs, different cultural backgrounds. And I think you can even go so far as to decide to root for the UCLA Bruins if you want to, and they won't revoke your degree. But you don't have to. I don't expect you to. And you know, I look out at all of you sitting there in your identical black and red uniforms and uh, these ridiculous hats. And I'm amused at the incongruity, right? Because the one thing I know about you all is that you're intellectually diverse and independent. You are graduates of an institution that has encouraged you to think for yourself. I want you all to continue doing that. And what's more, I want you all to think very, very loudly so the rest of us can hear. Thank you and congratulations.